Zoe. I'm Gretchen Felito from the Philippines. Hello from the Philippines. Hi. Who's your dog behind you? Oh, this is my dog, Party. Oh my, Party? <laughs> party. What yeah, a great party. name. Oh my God. Party is so cute. Thank you. And this is her son, Simba, by the way. Just party and Simba? Simba? Yeah, this is her son. Oh yeah. my God. Amazing. Zoe, congratulations on your directorial debut. Thank you. Wow. My mind was on overdrive and I was deeply moved, especially about the power issue that was brought to light. What message did you want to convey in this film? I really wanted to explore power. It's such a complicated entity. And, you know, it's it's something that we all are kind of striving for, but it's kind of innately evil because in order to be on top, someone has to be on the bottom. And so I really wanted to, to look at that. And it's kind of the, the driving force of everything in a way. Um, and I wanted to explore and talk about and highlight the absurdity of what women are constantly uh, being expected to do. You wrote this seven years ago and you really believed in this project and so much has happened since then, the Me Too movement people with bad behavior being called out, and in a society where we're made to suffer in silence, how personal and important is it to you that we open a discussion about the abuse of power and make people accountable for it? I, I mean, it's obviously very important to me. That's why I made the film. Um, and I think what's interesting is, yes, accountability is so important, but also if we want to heal, we have to educate people and we have to find ways for them to understand why it's not okay. And, um, you know, the idea with this film, it's definitely not meant to be a lecture or a wagging finger. It's meant to try and shift the perspective a little bit so that people can maybe understand a little bit more and clearer, you know, what it is we go through and why we feel this way. And sometimes you kind of have to tighten things and, you know, change the language of things so that people can understand. So this is meant to be an invitation um, for, pe for people to, to lean in and learn more. And it was so effective for me. I enjoyed it, but at the same time, I was like, oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. So that I have so many questions after. Channing said, this movie made him fall in love with acting again. What was it like directing and working with your fiance? And how did you bring out that different side of him, that dark, scary, and creepy side of Channing? The reason it was so wonderful to work together is because we trust each other so much. And there's so much care and love there. And, um, you know, he was able to go to places that um, were complicated and difficult um, because he knew that I was there to protect him and to guide him and I had that from him as well you know he's an incredible producer um, and a very smart storyteller and we built this character together um, and I'm, I'm so so proud and excited for people to see what he's capable of. He was spectacular at the end scene that monologue wild I was like whoa <laughs> yeah <laughs> what was it like being behind the camera this time around is acting harder, which is more challenging, acting, directing, and your advice to aspiring directors. I I love being behind the camera. It's it's funny. It's they're both difficult in their own way. I would say that uh, directing is way more tiresome. It's it's harder in terms of um, it's so time consuming. Um, I did enjoy not having to think about what I looked like. That was really freeing for me. And I think the thing that I would say to directors is that uh, there's two things. It, one is that it's the director's biggest job to stay creative in a crisis because nothing will ever go the way it's supposed to go, but that's when you need to be the most creative. And that it's important to uh, let go of what you think things were, were going to be. The more you try and control art, the worse it is. And you have to let art show you what it wants to be and listen to that. We all somehow have a Frida inside of us. Why do you think Naomi's character Frida is so relatable in many ways? Well, we've all, as women, been told and have felt invisible, been told to be invisible, to be less disruptive, that we're not deserving of attention or of, of power or comfort or wealth or luxury. Um, and, you know, I, I knew that when I was writing this, this part, 
um, that I wasn't the only woman that has felt this way. And so, and Naomi brought so much to the character. She's such a talented actress and just made, added so many layers to what was already a very complicated part. Shining said he wants to come over the Philippines soon. You have so many fans in the Philippines. Your message to them and why they should not miss Blink Twice. Oh, oh my God, all the amazing people in the Philippines. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you love the film. And yeah, we would love to come visit someday. And I want to come hang out with Party. Yes, <laughs> sure. Thanks, Zoe. Congratulations and thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's nice to meet you. <laughs>